it's my pleasure to introduce Min Lee. Uh, Min worked uh, with uh, Drs. Bing Lam and Harvey Lodish on MIR 125B function in development during her PhD at Singapore MIT Alliance. She then spent five years in Dr. Lieberman's and of in Child's Postdoc in Singapore, where her group focuses on EVs from red blood cells for therapeutic delivery and EVs from tumor cells in cancer crosstalk. Um, today, her talk is going to be about sending EV to the right address, a robust enzymatic method for covalent conjugation for uh, EVs with targeting moieties. So please welcome me. In. First of all, I'd like to thank um, all of you to, to join us today, especially um, if you are, when you are on holiday in the US. Uh, and thanks a lot to Carolina and all the organizers of the Web EV Talk for putting together such an exciting series of talks. Um, it's very educational for me and my students and um, I guess everybody in the EV field. Um, so today I will share with you the, the latest data from my lab um, that we work on extracellular vesicles um, to establish a new enzymatic method for co covalent conjugation of extracellular vesicles with targeting moiety. So as you know, um, extracellular vesicles are, are natural delivery vehicles um, that the, can send proteins and RNA and sometimes DNA from one cell to others. These are very important for the in, in, intercellular communication. And um, these vehicles also make a great drug delivery vehicle. So he, the vehicles have um, many advantages over uh, synthetic vehicles such as it's non-toxic and naturally picked up by many cell types. Um, EV from immune privileged cells are non-immunogenic, so it has um, very good um, non-immunogenic uh, properties. However, there are several challenges in the field uh, when we try to apply EV-based therapeutics. Um, the first challenge is to scale up uh, the production of EVs. So in our lab, as well as uh, many other labs, we believe that we, we've seen use Cellized for EV production, and we have to um, culture liters of cells, um, millions of cells, in order to get enough EVs uh, for therapeutic treatment. And when we use cell line, um, we run into the risk of oncogenesis because there are many components of um, uh, of the cells, such as um, natural transposons, uh, oncogenic RNA, and protein. Are secreted into the EV. So it's not very safe for the recipient cells, especially when we um, need to modify cell line, we add in even more elements such as um, antivirus vector um, that can also go to the EV. Therefore, the prevalent cell type to use for therapeutic purposes in primary cells. And in our lab, we, we use red blood cells as an ideal source for extracellular vesicles. Because their blood cells are very safe, um, they are primary cells from humans. Um, they have no DNA and no risk of oncogenesis. So there's no risk of genetic material transfer. Um, it's sustainable because red blood cells are the most abundant cell type in our body. They can be easily obtained from blood banks. It's scalable because uh, red blood cell formation can be accelerated um, in the economic profession. We have shown in this paper that um, we can use calcium aminophore to induce massive release of EVs from RBC. Um, we can yield approximately uh, 1,000 times more EVs than from cell line at the same scale. And here is how we, um, how we purify the EVs. So first we obtain red blood cells from whole blood and then treat them with calcium aminophore overnight. Um, we then remove cell and debris by um, centrifugation, a low speed centrifugation. Then we concentrate the EVs using ultra centrifugation. Remove protein contamination, we use supercution. And the good thing about these EVs is that they are red in color. So we can see a clear layer, layer of uh, red color EVs 
on top of the sucrose. You can separate them very well and then wash them again by our centrifugation. This is how the EVs look like. So they are quite uh, intact and um, very clear um, membrane structure. They range from 100 to 300 nanometer in diameter. Um, the medium is about 150 nanometer. They contain EV markers such as Alex and TSU101. They also contain a lot of hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin A. So we then um, label these EVs with PTA26 and fluorescent dye and add it, uh, them to leukemia cells. So in this leukemia cell mode N13, we found that um, most of the cell became fluorescent positive. I mean, they took up the EV. They also took up hemoglobin A from the EV, uh, shown here, that um, the cell after incubated with EV become hemoglobin A positive, which is in the untreated cell. So the cell pick up EV very well. We we can try then try to um, deliver RNA using the EV. We electroporated um, fluorescent ASL into the EV, and after incubation, um, the leukemia cell became 80% positive for the fluorescent, which is much better than the transfection using chromosome reagents such as lipopectamine or interferon. And we also found that the EVs did not increase cell death in more than 13 cells, while the compositional transfection reagent increased cell death by 20 to 30%. So therefore, RBC EVs are able to deliver ASL to leukemia cells at higher efficiency and lower toxicity. We then asked if we can deliver an ASL or get an oncogene. And here we focus on MU125B, that actually oncogene in leukemia, lymphoma, and many types of cells. Um, this microRNA regulate apoptosis by suppressing multiple genes in the PP3 pathway. This is what, I, um, what we found during my PhD. And recently, we also found that MU125B suppress PP3 not only in cancer cells, but also in fibroblasts. And that turned fibroblasts into cancer associated fibroblasts. So this microRNA has multiple functions in cancer and is a very good therapeutic target for cancer. We therefore suppress B125B by um, an AS cell that we electroporated into the EVs. And after we treated uh, leukemia cells with these uh, EVs, we found that um, B125B was suppressed by uh, 85 to 90 percent um, in a dose dependent manner. And that was not observed with uh, ASO only or the EVs only or the negative control ASO. So the EVs with uh, MU125B ASO also suppress MU125A with this, uh, which has similar sequence and MU125B. That led to an increase in MU125 target back one and suppression of proliferation. So we then Tested this in several cell lines that also applicable in breast cancer cells. Um, this is MCF10, CA1A cells, uh, very aggressive cancer cell line. We observed um, suppression of MU125A, MU125B, and reduction in viability with the um, um, ASL treatment. So this means that the ASL can be delivered by MU125B, uh, by, by uh, RBC EVs to suppress B125B in leukemia and breast cancer in vitro. We then try to apply this in vivo. So firstly, we use the breast cancer model, where we injected uh, CA1A cells in the flank of mute mice. And then we um, injected um, the PKS26 labeled EVs in one of the tumor. And uh, here, after 24 to 72 hours, we found that the the fluorescence spread through the tumor that was injected with the EV. And uh, on the section of the tumor, we found that um, the EV was taken up by tumor cells. We then treated the mice with um, the EVs intratumorally every three days. And we found that the EVs with mu 5 b ASO suppress tumor growth um, for 30 to 42 days. And that was significantly different from 
um, the treatment with the, the ISO only or the negative control ISO with EV. We say nothing, we can apply this systemically because the intratumoral injection is only suitable for um, local um, uh, type of cancer. But for metastatic cancer, systemic cancer, we need the systemic treatment. So to do that, we, we first label the EVs with EII injected into the mice um, using um, IP root. And we found that the, the EVs accumulated a lot in the liver, so much intestine and spleen. We also asked if this EV goes to the bone marrow. So we, we here we labeled the EVs with another dye from PPT um, 680. And after we injected into the mice, um, we analyzed bone marrow cells by flow cytometry. We found that 40% of the um, cells were positive for PPT dye. Um, so as you can see here that um, a lot of the bone marrow cells took up the EVs. And um, this is a good news because um, the, uh, the, it's probably due to the fact that the EVs derive from red blood cells and red blood cells uh, arrive from the bone marrow. So the, this EV has the natural homing effect to the bone marrow. And that is good for, can, uh, for leukemia treatment because leukemia starts from the bone marrow. So here we use the leukemia model where we injected leukemia cell labeled with luciferase into the tail vein. After one week, we can find leukemia cells uh, with bioluminescent signal in the bone marrow. And we started to treat the mice with ASO in EVs IP every two days. After nine days, we found that in the controlled mice, there are uh, high leukemia burden in the bone marrow and uh, other organs. But the ASO targeting Mu125B can suppress this leukemia burden significantly. So therefore, um, the ABCEV is disabled for systemic treatment of leukemia. We then, um, so, this, uh, so this data um, together shows that the ABCEVs are able to deliver RNA um, to leukemia cells, to breast cancer cells, and probably other types of cells as well. We also show in that paper that we have, um, we are able to deliver mRNA, so SCAP9 mRNA for um, genome editing. And this method is scalable because we can um, produce quite a lot of EVs from each unit of blood. Um, the EVs are safe because they are, there are no DNA, uh, and low toxic, uh, low toxicity. They are quite stable and they can be used for autologous or allogenic treatment. So we, we then asked if we can um, make the treatment more specific to cancer cells. And also if we use it for other type of therapy, we need to make um, the uptake of the EV more specific to the target cells by modifying the modifying the um, EVs. So we, here we, um, we're trying to put antibody and peptide on the surface of the EV, so that they, they bind to specific receptor on the target cell. Therefore, they are taken up only by the target cell, but not by other cells, so that we can reduce the side effect that may cause by un un unspecific, um, non-specific uptake. So how do we how do we modify the EV such that they would, um, go to the right address? And this is a I think this is a question that um, many of us ask when when we use EV for therapeutic purpose. Um, there are already methods in uh, established in the field using genetic modifications or chemical treatment, um, but those are um, is a criteria so it's quite hard for the EVs. So we, here we try a dental method where we use enzymes, an enzymatic reaction um, with uh, sautés. Um, this is the, the um, protein um, peptidase that can conjugate peptide um, to protein. And this was used before with um, red blood cells. 
So in this paper, um, by the Lodi's lab, um, there's um, peptide that can be conjugated to protein on the surface of, of uh, red blood cells um, using sautéed enzymes. We profile our EVs and we found that um, there are many proteins that are similar or the same as, uh, as on the membrane of red blood cells, such as um, Bantry and uh, stomatin and um, glucotransporter and so on. So we hypothesized that the RBT EV should react to sauteed in the same way as um, the red blood cells. Therefore, we try to use sauteed for conjugation of RBT EVs with peptide. Here we try a, a peptide with EGF bar binding site. We added a sauteed binding site to the peptide, and we also have a biotin as an end terminal for detection. This peptide should react with sautés and form an intermediate. Then um, this intermediate can react with um, lysine residue on the surface of EVs to form a covalent bond. And to detect the product of this um, sautés reaction, we use spectrobilin HRP to visualize that on the Western block. And here you can see the, um, the spectrobilin signal um, showing where the biotin um, that are conjugated to protein. And here is um, the, the intermediate. So you can see that when we have sautés and peptide only, we can see this intermediate. Um, but when we have EV, there are, there are several high molecular weight bands indicating the protein that conjugated to um, the biotin related peptide. And after we watch this week, um, uh, Thai exclusive chromatography, the two bands remain on the block. So this band actually survives the denaturing condition of the SDH page. This means they are covalent bond. They form by covalent bond that very stable. This work was done by my student team. Uh, he had just graduated and moved to the US. Um, and it was a follow up by Jay in my lab, who is among the audience today. Um, so Jay had tried another enzyme called OAP ligase, who is better in sautés, is more active. It has lower um, enzyme to substrate ratio, and it's irreversible. So the good thing about this enzyme is that it doesn't have an intermediate, or the intermediate is not stable. So after the reaction, we found a very clear product without any intermediate. So as you can see here that this, um, after the ligation, um, we can have um, two bands. These are protein on the EV membrane, around 40 KD that has reacted with the, um, the peptide. They are conjugated with the biotinated peptide. So this, bio, this, this peptide has an EGA bar binding site um, and the NGL for the ligase um, binding. So Jay repeated this experiment um, with EVs from three different donors, and he, he found very similar products. So when he compares it with um, serion dilution of biogenesis HRP, he estimated that there, are, there was about 380 peptides per EV. We are quite abundant. We then asked if this EV, this EV had better uptake by EGFR positive cells. So here we use H358 lung cancer cells that are, are very high in EGFR. We label the EVs with calcium AM and measure the uptake of the EVs using flow cytometry. And here you can find that the, the uptake of the EV increase when we have the EGFR targeting peptide on it. And this was applicable to both the, um, the, ligase, uh, the ligase reaction and the sautéed reaction. But you can see that the, the ligase reaction uh, has better uh, enhancement in the uptake. Therefore, we continue to use the ligase for the subsequent experiment. And here again, we found that the, the percentage of the of, um, H358 cells um, with calcium AM increased with the EGA bar targeted um, peptide. And that was not uh, observed in 
EGI bar negative cells such as uh, N2A cells. So the, the increase in uptake was specific to EGI bar positive cells. We also try to block um, this uptake using an EGI bar targeting uh, peptide. And that reduced the uptake of um, the, the ET um, IBCED. So therefore, the, the uptake was mediated by EGFR binding. Now you may wonder how the cell take up these EVs. Um, we, we observe that they are taken up mostly by endocytosis. Um, so we use three different endocytosis uh, inhibitor. Philippine that block um, lipid rough gradient endocytosis and carbiolin mediated endocytosis. EIPA that block um, macropinocytosis and womanin that block phagocytosis. We found that all three inhibitors can block the uptake of RBC EV by H3PA cells. So these are the EVs without any modification. And this uptake is dependent on energy because when we reduce the incubation temperature to 4 degrees, um, we didn't find any uptake. We then tested this with the targeted EV. So this EV has the peptide on it, the EGFR binding peptide on it. And we found only Philippines that inhibit the uptake of the, the targeted EVs by H3 by itself. So therefore, when we conjugated the EVs with the peptide, um, they go to a specific pathway that mediated by carbiolin and lipid drop um, in this H3 by itself. So we thought that we can conjugate other peptides other than the EGA by binding peptide. So here we use a cell peptide we derived from CD47, the, the don't eat me signal. And when we conjugated RBCV with cell peptide, we found that this can lead to a reduction in the uptake of RBCVs by monocytic cells, including monantotin cells. And um, GSP1 cells. This is consistent with previous studies that the cell peptide can prevent phagocytosis. So we tested this in vivo by injecting um, CFAC labeled RBCEV in the tail vein. And then we collect the blood um, from these mice and capture the RBCEVs using anti CPA The CPA is a specific marker for RBCEV. We call the um, um, anti-GPA antibody on the beast to capture the EV specifically. And we found that um, the concentration of EVs in the blood um, was higher when we had um, the cell peptide on the EV. So that means that the cell peptide is soon in increasing the circulation of the EVs um, in the blood. We further uh, uh, try to conjugate the EVs with uh, nanobodies. These are single domain antibody derived from camel. They have only a heavy chain, so they are smaller than conventional antibody, but they have very high affinity for their target. We also call it BHH. So here to conjugate BHH to, um, to the EV, we use a two-step method. Why we, first we ligate a linker peptide onto the EV using ligase. And then we, we ligate the nanobody onto uh, the peptide. So in this way, we have a space in between the EVs and the, and the nanobody to reduce the steric hindrance so that the, um, the ligation is more efficient. And as such, we found that um, here on the Western blood uh, uh, anti-flex, which is uh, the tag on the, the VHH, and the VHA we have here is, uh, is the one that binds to EGFR. Um, we found that the, the, con the conjugation resulted in um, two prominent bands, um, indicating the protein on the RBC EVs are ligated to, um, to the VHA. And this band are quite uh, consistent with EVs from three different donors. And by comparing this with the serial dilution of the VHH, we found that there was about 49 uh, VHH copy per EV. 
And VHS has a very high affinity um, for, um, for EGFR. Um, it's actually better than the peptide. So although the, the copy number of the VHS is lower than the peptide copy number, uh, but we were able to observe an increase in uptake. So here we have um, CFSC labeled ABC EVs. And when we, um, we conjugated this EVs with VHS um, against EGFR, we found an increase in uptake of this VHS in the EGFR positive cell. And so here, um, we also found that uh, increase in uptake by flow cytometry um, in H3-5A cells but not in the EGFR negative cells such as monad 13 cells. So this indicates that the um, conjugation of RBC EVs with nanobody against EGFR can, can enhance the uptake of uh, RBC EVs by um, this EGFR positive cells. We then try other BHH, um, uh, one that targets m cherry and another one targets HER2. And we found that this VHS can help us to increase the, up, the specific uptake of RBC EVs in m cherry and HER2 positive cell respectively. So therefore, the method is quite versatile. We can use this method to conjugate different, different nanobody to RBC EVs for uh, increased specific uptake by the target cell. Now we move on and test this in vivo. So here we have the um, H3-5S cell labeled with luciferase. We injected that into the tail vein. After three weeks, we can detect the cells in the lungs. So the mice now have lung cancer. We injected the DIR labeled RBC EVs in the tail vein. After eight hours, we found that the EV accumulated a lot in the liver, spleen, bone, and lung. So this is different from the picture that I showed you before because this is IV injection. Um, and previously, we did IV injections. So by IV injection, we have um, a lot of accumulation seen in the liver. But with the EGFR targeting peptide, we can see increased accumulation of EVs in the lung with lung cancer. And here you can see higher signals. And it's, significant, um, it's a significant increase um, among five, five mice in the group. And there's also a slight decrease in the uptake of the LBC EV in the liver. We then tested this, um, validated this at the cellular level. Here we have uh, H3-5 cell with m cherry. We injected them in the vein, and then after the mice developed lung cancer, we injected uh, EVs with CFSC label and analyzed the dissociated cells using flow cytometry. So here in this fact plot, we we get the m cherry positive cells, and we found that among the m cherry positive cells, we got lung cancer cells. Um, the uptake of EVs with EGFR targeting peptide or EGFR targeting BHH was much higher than the, the uncoated EVs um, or the control ligated EVs. So, therefore, the conjugation with the BHH targeting peptide, which uh, the the EGFR targeting peptide or EGFR targeting VHS can increase the uptake of uh, RBC EVs by EGFR positive cancer cells. We then asked if we can use it to deliver um, a drug in a specific manner. And here we tested um, a chemotherapy drug, Paclitex cells, that is often used for treatment of lung cancer. We loaded PDX into the EVs using sonication and then coated the EVs with the EGF binding peptide using ligase. And in here you can find that if we um, treated the, so here's the, the loading capacity of PTX about 5%. And then when we treated uh, H3-5 HCL with, with these EVs, we found that they can suppress uh, viability significantly. And this is a very large suppression that um, decreased the, the, the effect decreased at the lower dose, but you can see a better efficacy of the drug when we have um, EGFR targeting peptide on the EVs. 
So we then try to apply this to the mice with lung cancer. And here we, we use a very low dose of PTX, only one milligram per kg, which is about 20 times lower than the clinical equivalent dose. So here we injected EVs with PTX by the tail vent. And you can see that this is a mice um, with um, lung cancer, this is the lucid bioluminescent signal of the cancer cells in the lung. That, sub that was suppressed by PTX only, but it was suppressed further by uh, the PTX in EGFR targeting RBC EVs. And you can see here that the EGFR targeting EVs increase the uh, efficacy of PTX significantly um, after 43 days. That was confirmed by um, a histology study where we found uh, less tumor in the lung and more apoptosis in the tumor. So this, um, this data together suggests that we can treat lung cancer cells systemically um, using RBC-EV with EGFR targeting peptide. So together, um, the data shows that we can, we can use EV for systemic treatment in a specific manner. We, we're currently working on the delivery of RNA as well. Um, here we have RBC EV conjugated with the um, ETA bar targeting VHH. We loaded uh, luciferase, including um, mRNA, into these EVs or fluorescent ASO into the EVs and then treated H3 cell with the EVs. So with the with the EV that carry uh, luciferase mRNA, we can observe increased luciferase activity um, when we have EGFR targeting VHH on the EV. And similarly, we have higher fluorescent signal in the cells that are treated with EV um, targeting EGFR. So that means the EGFR um, targeting VHH can promote RNA delivery by RBC EVs. Um, to EGFR positive cells. So in summary, um, we have um, developed a method to conjugate RBC EVs with peptide and nanobodies using protein ligase. This ligase can create covalent bonds that are very stable. The conjugation with EGFR targeting peptide and nanobodies can increase the specific uptake of the EVs by EGFR positive cells in vitro and in vivo. The conjugated EVs can be loaded with small molecule drugs or RNA, and this targeted delivery of the drug can increase the treatment efficacy. It's a very simple and um, versatile method that requires no genetic modification, hence there's no risk of oncogenesis. So with that, I would like to end here and, um, oh no, sorry. We, so what we are doing right now is to develop um, this method further for uh, different target in different cancer by um, uh, retargeting MIL125B and also other oncogenic genes in lung cancer, leukemia, and breast cancer, also cancer cachexia, and we work uh, a bit on COVID-19 as well. So with that, I'd like to end here and thank all the members of my uh, research group. Um, as this a uh, talented student that I've been uh, very lucky to work with. And thanks to all my collaborators in Singapore, in Hong Kong, and in um, the US and other countries. And thanks to the funding support from NUS and um, other uh, funding agencies. So we, uh, we have some vacancy in the lab and we welcome our students and postdocs to join us. This is our um, lab website, and this is my email. Uh, please contact me as well if, if you uh, would like to um, any, share any reagents or um, to collaborate with us. So I'd like to end here and welcome any questions. Thank you so much, Min, for an amazing and very informative talk. We have several questions um, for you. Um, how about we start with Philip? So do these EVs come from the endosomal pathway and the uh, MVP of red cells? Uh, 
that's a good question. I uh, we we think that they they come directly from the membrane because uh, red blood cells do not have endosomes. Exactly. Yes, they do not have endosomes, so we do not detect any CD63, but we do de detect Alex and PSC101. Um, we also detect some other marker, such as, um, uh, so wait a minute. Let me, we, we also, um, so most of the marker that we detect is actually membrane. Um, yes. So membrane they come from the membrane. Yes. And um, how would you say these compare with MSC exosomes as therapeutic agents? Um, I think MSC exosome has a lot of advantage uh, in terms of um, their own cargo. Or, like they, they have a lot of um, protein uh, growth factor that are, uh, that has therapeutic potential in repairing the the uh, healing and um, promoting stem cells grow. Um, so that is the advantage of mesenchymal stem cells. But it's uh, much more difficult to produce those EVs because uh, the the cells if you if you don't immortalize them. Um, they only grow for a uh, certain process, and uh, it's, you have to grow them in very large scale to produce enough EV for therapeutic purpose. Um, when we compare the production of EV uh, from metagamone stem cell and red blood cell, we found that we, uh, the cost for the same number of EV is about 600,000 times lower with the red blood cell. Yeah. But then you got to do a lot of fiddling with them to get effects, whereas the MSC exosomes already come with a lot of properties that are profitable. Yes, that's right. So the, the with RBC EVs, we have to load uh, the, the therapeutic molecules that we like. And uh, actually, it's good in the sense that you can have uh, better control of what you load inside. Yes. Because the RBC themselves, uh, the major content in the RBC themselves is hemoglobin. And that uh, is quite inert. It's, uh, we, we have um, tested that and it, it doesn't have any toxicity or effect in, uh, in the mice. Um, but we, we have to use the EVs from very young red blood cells. Then they don't have any effect. Uh, so if we we load any molecule inside, the effect would come from the molecule, and we know exactly um, the mechanism by that molecule, then um, that would be, so the EV would act more like a delivery vehicle. Last question, do these cross the blood-brain barrier? Uh, we have tried, but uh, they seem, they, they cannot cross the blood-brain barrier because these EVs are quite big. Yes. How big? Um, they are about 150 nanometer in diameter uh -huh. on average. Well, thank you but very much. When we A lot actually of really we fantastic work. <laughs> thank you thank so you. much. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. And I think um, Sai Chidi um, has a couple of questions. Yes. Thank you for the wonderful talk. So my first question is, if they have don't eat me signal, like how they are cleared from the system? If they have don't eat me signal, how are they clear from the system? Oh, that's a good question. I I think they the the system um, with macrophage clear uh, they they can clear these EVs well even with don't eat me signal. It's just a, a delay in clearance. Yeah. So the EVs actually themselves. They have CD47, and when we add cell peptide on them, uh, we, we can increase the don't eat me signal. But after 30 minutes, they all clear from the circulation. Even so after having CD47 signal on them? Yes, we can increase the, the circulation time uh, by only 5 to 10 minutes. Okay. So that, I think that may help us to increase the chance of the 
EV getting to the target site, but they are clear after 30 minutes. Okay, okay, good talk. And, and uh, my second question is, so in your last presentation, you mentioned that it's applicable in various other diseases. Like when I looked at EVs have specifically reached lungs, liver, liver takes up everything anyway. Lungs, bone marrow, right? Yes. So we, can only specific, so we can treat only specific type of cancers, but not all type of cancer, right? Yes, I think um, for the for the organ um, for the cancers that go to the organs um, that we have observed accumulation of EVs, it will be easier. But I think if we have the targeted delivery, we can also drive them to to certain organs that um, normally they don't go to. It's just more difficult. Maybe there's a limited amount. The, we target the delivery. Um, we can increase the specific uptake, but we cannot reduce on the natural uptake of the EVs by by the liver and spleen and lung. And, and what about the muscles? Like uh, since in in your biodistribution you haven't showed any muscles, but in your future prospectives you need to study on cancer cake eggs by myostatin. Like yes, 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 that's right. Um, so we actually have tried to inject the EV directly into the muscle by intratumoral, uh, in, intramuscular injection. And we found that the muscle take up the EV very well. Uh, but that is by the, uh, by the direct injection. If we, we actually haven't Check carefully by systemically uh, systemic injection whether they, they go to the muscle or not. Because um, muscle atrophy is irreversible. Like I'm wondering if you try to give EVs and how they are effective. It's, it's a question, but I, I'm not sure about it. Because muscle atrophy is irreversible, right? Uh, excuse me, you, you mean the muscle is uh, invisible? Uh, no, cancer cachexia is muscle because of muscle atrophy. Yes, yes, right? yes muscle yes. atrophy is irreversible. Irreversible, I see. Um, yes, yeah, so we, I think that if we treat um, the cachexia at early stage, um, we can we reduce. Can we can reduce the the effect of the cachexia. Um, we can. Uh, we can slow down the cachexia. So we have tried this in um, um, lung cancer cachexia model, and we found that the um, that suppression of uh, myostatin can reduce um, the cachexia development. And this is uh, also shown by uh, by other method where they use um, antibody to suppress myostatin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful. We have um, Lucia next. Yes, I'm here. Hi, thank you. It mean a great talk. So two questions. First of all, you said that, that uh, the red blood cells EVs are non-immunogenic, right? But then uh, there is uh, nanobodies attached to them. Aren't they supposed to generate an immune response? Um, they, they do not generate immune response. Um, so let me... So no, that's okay. You can just, no, you can just tell me. Yeah, and so then, they, we found that actually they, um, they're not much immune response um, when, we, when we have the um, test high with it and uh, we haven't tested with VHS, but the, the VHS uh, is from Camel and they, the Camel is um, nanobody normally is quite similar to, to human antibody. So okay. they, they do not generate much uh, immune response. I think we have to, to do that experiment with the VHS, but, um, but there's okay. also the possibility of humanized, um, humanized uh, antibody, the nanobody. Okay, perfect then. And then the next question. So I missed the first part. Where did you isolate the red blood cells from? Uh, the red blood cells from human blood. So we no, I know, but I mean, from it doesn't matter from they are taken, they are just from regular venipuncture. 
Do you oh. have to isolate them from large, like a half a liter blood? So where did you start from? Um, we start from, uh, I think these are collected from Ben. So these are um, blood that we, we obtained from Red Cross uh, in Hong okay. Kong. Yes. Um, so these are quite a large unit of, of okay. uh, blood cells of whole blood. Okay, because we are working with the fibroblast like Kaluri has published. Have you compared your red blood cell CBs to the fibroblast the one that uh, have been published, not only by Kaluri, but a couple of people have published that the fibroblast do allow you to generate uh, mm -hmm. don't eat me signal positive EVs? No? Have you compared them? Uh, no, uh, we haven't compared them yet. We know that this EV has CD47, um, but uh, yes, we haven't compared whether the level of CD47 is as high as in the fibroblast. Um, so we we think that the yeah the, the EV the the EV that we generate also had a lot of uh, phosphate serine serine. So that that is um, um, why they are clear up very quickly although they have CD47. So I think, um, I'm not sure whether the, the fibroblast EV has phosphorylserine serine, but if they don't, then they may be better. Yeah, I'm not sure. You're very good. Okay, thank you then. Yeah, thank, thank you. For the thank you. Next question is from Maja, Maya. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, hi, Min. That was a fantastic lecture. I have just a quick question. Uh, do uh, those vesicles have a red blood group uh, antigens, actually? Uh, and uh, if they do, uh, would it be a problem in therapy? Uh, so you could uh, you ought to have uh, different uh, therapeutics for for different persons? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we we think that they. From the mass spec data, we we do see some um, some antigens such as Rh and um, Cal. Um, so we um, we think that they do have the antigen. We haven't tested the ABO. So for um, so we because we often use all black group, we we want to make it as universal as possible. So we often collect um, all black, uh, all minus blood. Mm -hmm. So that they are type universal, but I think in clinical practice we will uh, also need the information about other blood groups for blood matching. So we can use the, this this uh, product just like uh, we use the uh, um, the blood for blood transfusion. Wow, okay, thank you. Uh, do you see it would it be possible uh, to make that a personalized therapy uh, to take the blood from the ill person and uh, transform those vesicles uh, with your enzymes and uh, miRNA and then to bring it back to the patient? Yes, yes, I think it's uh, possible. Um, I think the way that we isolate EVs now is quite feasible to use uh, to get enough EVs from uh, the, the patient for treating himself. Of course, it depends on uh, what type of disease because we, we probably have, we need multiple treatment. For example, in cancer, we have to deliver uh, the drug repeatedly. So we have to keep taking the blood from the patient. And uh, I think if the patient is well enough to, to um, draw blood, then uh, it's possible. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eliani, do you want to go next? Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Min. And it was a fantastic talk. So uh, I have a question here that, I mean, mm, so you have clearly shown that uh, using RBC EVs, you can target the apoptosis and the P53 gene. So apart from apoptosis, has uh, there other studies that has studied the effect of RBC EVs on the HSC lineage screwing in AML? I mean, you have shown that they enter the uh, they they home to the bone marrow. 
So within the bone marrow, uh, are there any studies, uh, I mean, by you or uh, other, uh, what literature suggests that can they actually affect the HSC uh, linear screwing in AML? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think there is some study in certain disease that um, that EVs from old red blood cells that that are stored in the fridge for a long time it can affect um, the properties of the EVs. Actually, they increase oxidized hemoglobin, and that can uh, lead to activation of certain kind of um, immune response by by activating monocytes or, or macrophage response um, but the, that's why we always use the TVs from very fresh uh, blood samples and we don't observe any effect um, inflammation any inflammation in the in the bone marrow or other organs we found mm -hmm. that actually the EVs are taken up by SSC they are taken up by the stem cell, um, but we we don't see any effect. So we we actually use the EVs to deliver um, some RNA to uh, stem cell now, so for therapeutic purpose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, June. Do you want to go next? Sure. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Really fantastic presentation. So I was just wondering about your quantification of the peptide modification on EV. You mentioned that you can quantify that like per EV you have how many peptides. I, I think I missed some, some details there. How can you, how, how did you quantify that? Okay, uh, sorry, can you uh, say um, where you come from and where you are? Sorry, yeah, we're just trying to get uh a feeling about uh, where this program is outreaching. So if everyone asks question, can you please just state where, which institute you come from? Thanks. Yeah, this is Aijun Wang calling from UC Davis, University of California at uh, Davis. Of course, so basically what we do here is we initially uh, ligate EVs with the biotinylated peptide. So we have a monobiotinylated peptide. And following ligation, we use size exclusion chromatography to completely remove any free peptide or enzyme. So uh, once we do have the peptide, biotinylated peptide ligated EVs, we use nanoparticle tracking analysis to quantify the concentration of EVs. So we get the actual number of EVs per microliter. And then uh, before we start off, I should explain that this approach is semi-quantitative, but so once we do get the number of EVs per microliter, we load uh, for in, in this Western blot, we load uh, equivalent to 100 micrograms of hemoglobin. And then we run the Western blot along with a uh, dibiotinylated HRP standard. So we do know the, uh, we can get a value. So after we run the Western blot with the standard and the biotinylated EVs, we use the standard to get, a, uh, to construct a standard curve where we can say that 460 nanograms of HRP has this much moles of biotin. And then we use that to construct a standard curve and use that to get the number of moles of biotin in the EV sample. And then we get the number of molecules of biotin in each lane of EVs. And we divide by the number of EVs we loaded, which we got using the NTA measurement. And like dividing the number of biotin by the number of EVs gives you uh, approximation of the number of uh, copy number per EV. And of course, uh, the number is quite consistent, uh, despite it being uh, relatively consistent, despite the semi-quantitative approach. I see. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think that that's all the question. Carolina, do you want to wrap up the session? Yeah. Uh, thanks so much, Mian, uh, for the wonderful <laughs> talk. There was a lot of uh, interesting data there, and also um, for sharing your strategy for using EV to target uh, cancers. So um, I think with that, uh, we'll wrap up the sessions. And uh, thank you also for Elham to lead the questions.